1959, there were a lot of Mexican families that began arriving into Pilsen and Chicago. Some were coming straight from Mexico, others were coming from other sides of Chicago to move into Pilsen. In 1959, the Sons of Mexico City, that was a street gang, took on a new identity and stepped into a new leadership, new gang leaders. The new name of this organization would become the Latin Counts. In a city known for its fearsome super gangs, criminal enterprise like the mob, gangs, Chicago has its own culture from graffiti on the walls to how the south side and the north side are separated. In Chicago, it's where you're born that defines who you are, not your race. This is gang life. Cartel got me working for the big faces. Federally got my car full of brick cases. Hit the pin with a grin, there ain't no faking. I was picked to my back for my shoelaces. Got out, should have seen the look on their faces. All jealous cause your boy second Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to my channel. If you're new, make sure you subscribe. Hit the bell so you don't miss nothing. This is another series of gang life. Uh, if you guys have visited my channel before, I am doing a whole series on all the gangs from Chicago just because of the unique culture, graffiti, art, you name it. It's very, very different to a lot of places in the U.S. And I just wanted to share my story with you guys, you know, and that's it. So give me some thumbs up, some thumbs down, smash that like button, subscribe, and don't miss my shenanigans. If you are part of my Ron Strong crew, family, familia, raza. You know what it is. Suvante la Suburban. Put some gas in it. We're going to take a ride down 18th Street today and give you a little bit of history for those that, you know, are a little younger and didn't see 18th Street and Pilsen in that area because of what I've heard now, a lot has changed in Pilsen. A lot of Starbucks. Don't get me wrong, I love Starbucks, but it's very, very different culture, very, very different life from when I used to go around that area. When I tell people that I know many, many gangsters from many, many organizations, I mean it. And I mean it just because I was always running the streets. I was always up to no good. I spent a lot of time incarcerated. So this is where I made most of my friends. But my uncle used to work at Casa Astlan. It's in Pilsen. It's close to 18th Street. And that was Lang Count Hood. And we used to go pick him up every night. My grandma and my grandfather and I in the car. So I got to see their neighborhood. And it was a very, very tight-knit neighborhood. Yes. The Lang Counts were the first Mexican street gang in Pilsen. Back, back in the day, they had other names. They had, I think, two or three names. The furthest back I could trace her was uh, Texans. Um, I guess a Mexican family that moved from Texas, like cousins, brothers, they moved to Chicago and they started this organization to, you know, uh, protection, you know, club, whatever. The Sons of Mexico City was the next name after Texans. They were always fighting with the Taylor boys. It was a street gang. Uh, um, most of, in those days, they were called uh, greaser gangs. You know, uh, mechanics, blah blah blah. It just it was a different look. It is it is um, the 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 name and the colors. They say it was taken after the Polish counts street gang that was out in the other neighborhood called the back of the yards. You know, a little bit more into like Ashland Damon. That shit, but the the new symbols were going to be the cross with the slashes and the knight's helmet. Regardless of all the wars the Count have been with, because they have fought a lot of organizations. This is another organization that I look at like like the Saints. They have fought and they've they fought big enemies, and they still have maintained to grow and conquer new territory. And they fought everybody, trust me. The only ones they weren't fighting at one time were the bishops because they were almost like brothers, but then they got into a conflict too. And it's always, I don't know, man. 
it's always always money or or women that's that's the way I feel it in 1970 the land counts became one of the biggest street gangs in Pilsen in 1980 the counts began to expand they started a campaign expanding everywhere this is when they got into suburbs like Cicero uh, Bolingbroke uh, they got into Berwyn they got into all these all these suburbs Romeoville and the counts would open up their largest stronghold in Detroit Michigan yeah <laughs> in Detroit Michigan this is gonna be like almost like headquarters for them at one point in 19 and 1990 when their uh, their hood was established in Cicero this is when I was going to Morin East and they were cool at first with the land kings but then an all-out war broke out so the kings were always looking for them and they were always looking for the kings um, where my dad lived there was a park right on the corner I believe it was 58 and we were close to Roosevelt so I might have it wrong and my I'll look it up but I have the footage of the park and the house where I used to live at but I used to go play basketball there over the summertime you know when nobody knew me because I was fresh to that neighborhood nobody knew me so the council would talk to me and they would be like yo what's up blah, blah, blah. and I would talk to them and I uh, didn't have no affiliation but I was already hanging out with a lot of people that were folks you know um I was hanging out with the SDs. I was. I had a lot of boys that were two six, uh, Ridgeway Lords. Um, I just had a lot of boys that were folks. I, I wasn't. You know, years had passed that I had lived. I had left Twenty Sixth Street, so you know, I had a couple of boys that were kings. But most of my friends were folks at that school where I was going to. So every time I would have to get from Morning East to Roosevelt. Man, it was a uh, it was a mission because they were out there nonstop. They would hang out in a house right across the street from the park, second house from the corner. I remember exactly. There was a big fat dude that was always wearing red, um, and they took over that little park. That was their pretty much their hood. They were always going at it, and those streets were so little that. If you came flying down that street and you lost control of that car, if you're from Chicago, you know what's up. You ain't making out that hood. You're crashing, then you're jumping out, and then let's see how you get home. So they're, they're, they've, they've been able to maintain their territory, even though they're not a super big gang, like the Land Kings, the GDs, Blackstones, shit like that. They're a smaller organization, but they have been very very well organized and they've and they've been one of the only organizations that have not been infiltrated i bet you guys didn't know that most gangs have been inter inter ah, you see i can't talk <laughs> most gangs have been infiltrated by the feds the land counts have been one of the very few that haven't so they're very, very well organized, man, and they and they was they withstood the time and war with the Land Kings. That's got to tell you something. They have been able to maintain their territory in Pilsen, in Cicero, and south of Chicago. Other sections, um, they had to be closed due to heavy police presence. But they made the smarter decision by sending, you know, their extra forces to those neighborhoods that were important. Back in, day, in the day, that's what we did. We had 59th under control, so then we would go to 18th and Oakley, 18th and Cal, uh, 24th and Rockwell, and we would go to all these neighborhoods to just go help out and hang out like on Fridays or the weekends. Uh, same thing for 42nd. Uh, we would go to all the SD hoods and go hang out to you know support. And that's what the land counts did throughout the years. They, they concentrated... I remember at one time in Cicero, there would be like 50 of them out there at the park. And they would all be from, you know, other sections, but they were there to make sure that nothing happened and support, like, just in case something happened. So, that's the thing, is they, they've been so well organized that they've been able to keep their territory, keep the organization going, and, and, and just, you know, flourish. I hate to say it like that, but it is what it is. And like I always tell you guys, 
I don't I don't share these stories to glamorize gang banging, drug sales, mafia, cartel stuff, prison, none of that. I'm the first one to tell you, stay your ass out of prison, stay your ass off of drugs, stay your off ass out of gangs. Don't hang out with the wrong people. A true friend does not give you a gun and, and pretend to be your friend, tell you to go handle business. No. A true friend takes that gun from you and doesn't let you do something stupid with your life like that. The reason why I share this story is because whether you like it or not, it's history from the Windy City. It's history from where I grew up. It's history part of my life, how I did time, why I got into a gang. I was very, very glamorized as a kid with the whole mafia and gang culture that when I actually went into prison and started doing time, I started actually looking into why the history, where did this all start? And it's crazy because all the gangs in the United States started to protect each other. And then it just evolved into what it is now. But it was all immigrants and, and there's a very, very, there's a, there's a badass, um, uh, series on premiere. I'll, I'll put it on my next uh, video, but there's a series about how the history of gangs here in the United States started. And it was a bunch of immigrants coming from Europe everywhere. And their parents were like dying of, you know, diseases, blah, blah, and leaving little kids behind. So what these kids would do, they would all get together and form a group and that they would be out there stealing as well. And that's how the first gang started here in the United States. Um, what's that movie? Uh, uh, is it Gangs of New York? With uh, that white dude and that uh, guy with the glass eye? It's, that's a pr pretty much exact, like say of what, I, what I've read and what I've went through and studied and all that stuff, that's originally how gangs started, was to protect each other. And then obviously they start creating havoc on everybody else. You know, it's, it's like starting something good and then it ends up bad. But it is what it is. It is in our history books, it is culture, it is in movies, it is in shows, it doesn't matter. We're showing our kids that this is how it is. So, guess what? I'm gonna show them how it really isn't. How it really isn't. Because they only show you one side of the coin. They don't show you the 17 years you're gonna go do in prison. They don't show you the year in segregation. They don't show you that you're gonna, they're gonna take you away from all your loved ones and all this, and, and you're gonna be just destroyed completely from the inside out. This is why. I do my videos. This is why I share my history, my stories, because if I don't, who will? My name's JC. I am Wrong to Strong. You only live one life, man. If you live it right, our life is all you need. Give somebody a hug. Don't judge nobody. Stay in your lane. Live savage. And I'll catch you guys on the rebound.